So welcome everyone again at uh, our last press conference already for the World Economic Forum on Latin America. Um, on a very important topic, I'm here today. I'm Peter Vanum, Senior Media Manager at the World Economic Forum. And I'll be joined here today to talk about the topic of economic inclusion uh, worldwide and also specifically in Mexico uh, with three guests. Um, here right next to me is Ted Jacobuzio. Ted is Vice President, Global Insights at MasterCard. Right next to him uh, is his colleague from, uh, from Mexico, Carlos Montaño. Welcome, uh, Carlos, Vice President, Government Services and Solutions Thank at uh, MasterCard Latin America. Thank you. And also the former head of uh, Bansefi, a right. government-owned bank here in Mexico. Um, and then lastly, but certainly not least, <laughs> um, is uh, Rosario Perez, the CEO and President of Pro Mujer, which is a social enterprise, I should say, um, which is active in five countries and serves 300,000 clients in your case, clients are women, mm -hmm. um, uh, to include women uh, in the economic mainstream and in society. So we're going to be talking about economic inclusion. And mm -hmm. the reason why this is an important topic is because, uh, as you may remember from the spring meetings of the, of the World Bank just uh, last uh, month, uh, in the world there are still 2 billion people um, that are unbanked. And this is the so-called financial um, inclusion, or in the, their case, the financial exclusion. Um, Two billion people, that means uh, by uh, between one-third and one-fourth of the world population is still unbanked. Um, and what makes the problem even bigger is that financial exclusion is only a part of economic exclusion, which is broader. And so that's what we're going to be talking about here today, uh, both, uh, let's say, on the global level and also brought back to um, here in Mexico. And, and here in Mexico, it's also important, I must say, um, because I read that also in Mexico, only 40% of uh, people of uh, age 15 and over uh, actually have uh, a formal bank account. Um, and that is not uncommon in the region I saw. Uh, in Brazil, for example, it's the highest in the region, but it's still only two-thirds uh, of uh, uh, adults, uh, or I should say people age 15 and over. And across the region, it's actually lower. So great, so um, welcome then. Um, we're gonna start with Ted. Ted, uh, you're gonna be talking about um, the Connectors project that you, um, that you initiated. And, and you'll be talking about uh, what it is, who are these connectors, yes. and why does this matter to uh, economic inclusion? Yes, thank you, Peter. And, and thank you to uh, World Economic Forum also for inviting us um, to uh, actually premiere. This is the first time we'll be talking publicly about this research. Um, we think it's groundbreaking research, um, and we think it could be game-changing research, because what it does at the end of the day is it gives public-private partnerships the ability to scale their programs for the economically um, excluded. And so, uh, in a way, it provides a blueprint, an actionable blueprint, um, for the construction of programs, for the further refining of programs uh, on the ground. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the genesis of the research. For the journalists in the room on your chair, you'll find a press release, also uh, a brief presentation and some screenshots. Um, I would invite you and also anybody watching on the, uh, on the live stream uh, to go to the website, which is uh, insights.mastercard.com slash the connectors project. So what were we trying to do with this project? Uh, there's been a lot of good work done uh, about exclusion. Uh, much of it has been about financial exclusion or financial inclusion, if you want to look at the glass half full. And um, that's, it's all good work. And a good deal of that work, I have to say, has been done by MasterCard itself. Um, and, but we were interested in financial inclusion as part of a larger picture, as part of economic inclusion. Um, certainly, it's one of the most important of the three pillars of uh, inclusion that we identified, which were uh, access to knowledge, access to capital, which would be financial um, uh, inclusion, um, and access to employment. But a lot of the work has been quantitative in nature uh, and um, has been what I'd call top-down. And, and that's fine, because you have to have the numbers in place if you're going to make a case for anything. But what we wanted to do is, is kind of flip the camera around, take it from a top-down perspective and put it from the perspective of people on the street, as it were, in the developing world. Um, what does it feel like to be 
economically excluded? What does it feel like to be on a journey um, to economic inclusion? Uh, what are the factors that you face? Um, what, are the, what is the perspective that you have? So to do this, we went to uh, four markets globally. Um, and they were Egypt, India, Indonesia, and Mexico. And Carlos is going to talk uh, more in more detail uh, about the uh, about the Mexico co findings. Uh, but what we did was we did some we did some quantitative research in order to in order to put some uh, uh, statistical bones in place so that there'd be a, a, a structure around our insights. But we really wanted to talk to people, so we engaged in very in depth conversations with our research subjects, and we asked them about what it meant to feel economically excluded. What did may, it mean? May I interrupt you right, right Yeah, there. please, Peter. So um, th this is a, a research that, that, that shows a situation of people that are economically and financially excluded? Well, it, it, that's a great question. Uh, one of the things, it, it would be a fallacy to say that financial uh, inclusion is binary. It's not true. It, it, and, and what people say is that, well, either you have a pre prepaid card or you don't. So it's, it's yes or no. In fact, it's not. It's, it's it, because there's access to products, which is one thing, and the government may mandate a certain degree of access to products, and then there's usage, and you have to get from A to B. So in fact, it's not binary, but let's stipulate that, okay? Let's say that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, financial inclusion is to a certain extent binary. Economic inclusion ha is, is totally a spectrum. It's not at all a yes or no question. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey along a spectrum. So a lot of the people we spoke to felt to a greater or lesser degree, yes, they did feel economically excluded. But the stories that we highlight on the website, and I would refer you to the website, there are videos, there are photographs, there's very compelling information. There's a white paper that's available in each of the local languages, Spanish, Arabic, Hindi, and Malay, as well as English, of course. But what we found out from talking to these people were uh, that, that there were people who felt a degree of economic inclusion. And we found that the factor that made for that inclusion, that got them on that journey towards being totally included in the municipal, the national, and even with technology, the global economy, was this notion of connectors, which is why it's called the Connectors Project. Now, what's a connector? A connector is an individual who positively impacts the journey to inclusion moving forward. So that the, the connector is someone, uh, a, an individual, who can reach people who are on a journey to economic inclusion and positively impact them. All right? Some of this is very much evident in the literature. For instance, in the developing world, networks are very important. We discovered nothing new there. Networks are important because civil society may not reach everyone, so that the importance of personal networks, social, familial, religious, uh, uh, tribal, these networks become, become extremely important. That's not new, it's in the literature. Even the notion of the connector, the individual who positively impacts your journey to inclusion, that's not necessarily new either. But what we think we were able to do in this research was delimit them, we say there are five of them, and we name them. And that's really new news, because we, what we think this allows the P3 community to do. And, and that Go ahead, P3, please. The P3 community. Public-private partnerships. OK. OK, people like uh, Rosario, people like Bansefi, uh, working in partnership with governmental agencies to positively impact right. the, uh, the journey and to inclusion. You're going to talk is now through who are, what are those five um, yes. connectors. Yes. And the reason that you're going to do this is because if you impact these people, these connectors, then you can actually increase financial and economic inclusion? Is that the purpose? That's, that's, the, that's the thesis, yes. Okay. And what we think is by identifying them and by naming them, we're not simply pasting labels on them. We're saying that there are certain behaviors associated with being one of these connectors. And if you know those behaviors, through leveraging of data, you can reach them. That is really the sharp end of the stick. That's where we really think we have discovered something useful and something that can actually help locate more and more people and help them right. on their journey to inclusion. And it helps us to go from that static number here in Mexico, for example, of 40% of people that have a bank account 
to go to the, the actual spectrum, which you say uh, is, is, a, is a spectrum from, from white to black, a gr whole gray spectrum of people that are on that journey towards economic inclusion. That's correct. Okay. Um, so our five connectors are um, the mentor, the role model, the introducer, the business influencer, uh, and the, the uh, and the um, uh, and the uh, migrator. and the migrator. Of these five, the most important are the business influencer and the migrator. And I, I said that with the sharp end of the stick. In fact, the tippity top of the sharp end of the stick, in fact, is are those two people. The business influencer who can put you in touch with banks, with uh, insurance companies, with uh, all sorts of people who can uh, help you uh, move forward, and of course the migrator. Now, when we say migrator, let me make that clear. We're not talking about migración. We're not talking about moving from one economy to another. We're talking about more of a social migration. We're talking about uh, you. There may be no geographical uh, uh, migration involved. For instance, Hugo, uh, who's featured on the website. Uh, from Mexico City. He stayed in Mexico City, but his uh, migrator was his grandmother who left to him her stall in Mexico City that he's turned into a thriving electronics repair business. So that the migrator really gets you from one place to another. It may be geographical. Sapan, the gentleman from Mumbai, he did go from his village into Mumbai to learn the, te the textile trade. It can be geographical, but the journey can also be in your own head. So if you can, as a, uh, an entity, if you're a Bansefi or if you're a Pro Mujer, uh, working with the government, if you can locate the business influencer and the migrator at the right moment and, and locate these people in a scaled way, we think it's a game changer. That's the thesis of the research. I would again direct you to the website. There's a tremendous wealth of information there. And, um, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about how you could even contribute to uh, the growth of this information moving yeah. forward. And when you say game changer, you mean we're trying to change the game of financial inclusion and economic inclusion. We want to get more people economically included. We want to get more people economically included, and we think that this is a blueprint for constructing programs that can do that at scale. And I think that the real important word there is at scale. There's a great deal of great work that's been done um, uh, but what we think we've discovered is a way to scale those programs by identifying and giving a name and an identity to each of the five uh, yeah. of, the, uh, of the connectors. Thank you, uh, Ted. And then um, maybe to, to make this a bit more tangible, uh, may I ask, um, Carlos, uh, could you tell us a bit what that means here in Mexico? Thank you, Peter, and thank you, thank the, for, thanks for, uh, for the World Economic Forum for having us here. When we say game changer, we actually mean to put things to work. Now, we don't want to, to, to for this piece of, of research, a very good research, to remain like an academic document, and that's it. When we say game changer, it's, it's basically the purpose of the meetings here and all of these days is how do we make these things move ahead mm -hmm. and actually provoke and not just describe? So uh, when we say game changer is how do we actually find these, these, these uh, people in the different economies, in Mexican economy, so you can uh, not only give them uh, an account, not only give them a debit, credit, a debit or, or, or a prepaid card, but actually how do they uh, get out of poverty? Imagine for a second that uh, you don't have the financial institutions you don't have social enterprises, and you don't have governments. Uh, even in that scenario, people are going to try to make it, mm -hmm. and they will go try to make it on their own. This research, this research Wait, actually it, you mean it to, to improve their situation, to look for their families, to do better, right. to, to, do, to do good, no? to do well. So uh, what, what this research is finding is they, they did it somehow, and they did it through these connectors. So. What if social enterprises, private companies, and government, these three pieces together, uh, we work together to help those people to do more of what they're doing, to actually even kind of reproduce these characters, no? to let them know that they're making a great contribution to fight poverty. Then we can then, uh, make con uh, convert this research into an actionable right. item, into something that it will actually 
change, move the needle, change the numbers. Uh, of course, get you financially included, economically included, and out of poverty. Right. And so if we bring it down, we're here in, in Riviera Maya, Mexico. So what you're saying is there are people, even if we go out to the conference center here, we would find people that, that, that have those roles of, of connectors. Yes. Maybe they are not themselves aware of the importance of what they do and the fact that they are doing it. Um, and if we would be able to make them aware, then we could uh, make progress in economic inclusion. And, is that right? And that's right. And another thing, a couple of things. Uh, these roles are not static. They're actually people change of roles. Uh, they would probably be uh, influenced at some time and later become an influencer of someone else. And, and could you bring that down to where we are? Could you imagine a, a person outside that you know, that we can Def imagine? Definitely. Someone who actually uh, just learned that he can do better by having a bank account, a formal bank account. And when he realizes that, he would probably tell his brother, hey, why don't you get a bank account? So he... And then he becomes exactly uh, a change an role. introducer, or he becomes a role model, maybe. Well, it depends on the level of, of, of nearness of, the, yeah. of that person. No, it would, it would depend. It, 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 you could even have some of these uh, 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 characters not even be uh, not even be a person. Yeah. Actually, it could be a, a public figure, a TV figure that you act, you 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 see somehow, and you say, well, it makes you change your mind, makes you start this journey. So it it could be someone who's really close to you. It could be someone who is not that close to you, but somehow influences you. OK. Very well. Um, and so uh, and could you tell us um, how, how, you would, how you would suggest to do that here in Mexico? Definitely. Uh, if you have uh, partners that, that, that you see? Uh... We, we, I think that no one can do it alone. No? So to, to actually find these people is not an easy task. Uh, most governments actually don't have the tools or the resources to actually reach that uh, that deep into the society to, right. to pick them point. But because initially we, we, we assumed, of course, that if we talk about um, things like poverty ele elevation or economic inclusion or employment, we think of governments as, as, the, as the ones who bring that about. And what you're saying, they at this point, I think it's important also, Carlos, that we say, because you, you, you have actually two hats, or you had two hats. You, you were uh, uh, heading a, a, a state-owned government bank, and now you're at the private sector. And what you're saying is, um, that, that, that the government and the private sector should, should work together to achieve Definitely, that. definitely. There is no way that governments can do it alone. Right. And, and, and they don't have the, 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 the tools, they don't have the, the knowledge that social enterprises like Promujer actually does have. So by partnering with such institutions, government can, can increase and multiply its reach by, uh, by, by a large proportion. And uh, by doing so, uh, you are building an, an, an alliance that will actually literally move the needle, uh, be a game changer, and get people faster out of poverty. Right. And uh, may I ask that maybe Rosario, because you've been introduced here as, as, as going to play an important role in, in bringing this about, but, um, but how would this work for you? And, and, and Rosario, you, again, you, you are the CEO and president of, of Pro Mujer, and you work with women around Latin America in mm -hmm. five countries, including here in Mexico. Um, uh, but for, to include women in, econ in the economic mainstream. So, so how, do you, how do you relate to what we've just talked about? Well, um, first of all, I want to thank the World Economic Forum and very much MasterCard because MasterCard has been an incredible partner to us. Uh, they've given us a million dollars plus, you know, in very, you know, to address a few issues that we have, both technologically and uh, in, in fact, they supported the opening of a branch here in Milpa Alta in Mexico City. Um, I feel that this research of the connectors is incredibly important because it is helping us understand <clears throat> behaviorally, which is very important, what are the, the, the connectors or the catalyzers for actual change. And uh, I know that the business influencer is an important one and the migration uh, person. But I think all of them, actually, uh, as I read them, they all relate to Promujer. You know, so if you talk about the mentor, you know, we have, uh, we have assessores, which are the people who go around the communities promoting, you know, to come to Promujer. 
and th these people are, uh, you know, promoters. Then we have our assessors who are actually developing a relationship, a trusting relationship with, with the clients <clears throat> who mentor them. And, you know, if I think about uh, the business uh, <clears throat> uh, intelligence, uh, uh, Promujer is a business intelligence because we have a brand in the communities. And so we actually are making sure that these people, when they come to us, they begin to be part of the whole economic, financial, uh, formal mm -hmm. process because we're a formal organization. And we, I haven't said this, but we also have 2,000 employees. Most, 10% of them were at some point clients. And they actually then, to, you know, they begin to move. You know, the, the, so they, they transform themselves into a different type of connector. Um, and so I, I am a big believer in, you know, we've done our own research in, in not as, as um, of the same nature, but in terms of trying to understand this, the, the drivers of, you know, because we need to understand, to get financial inclusion widespread, I am a great believer that you cannot do it, you know, everybody's talking about technology. Yeah, technology can help enormously, but you need to understand what are the needs of these people? What are they going through? You know, which in your examples are pretty, very, very vivid, you know, so you, you understand the groups and what makes those groups tick. What was the, the turning point that helped them get to the next level? So I am extremely excited uh, about this research. Okay. Um, well, it, it, it almost sounds as if we, we've solved the issue, but that's of course not the case. Um, <laughs> so maybe let's, let's open it up for, for a few questions now um, from the audience. Is, is it clear what, what we're doing here and, and, and what would you uh, want to ask about this, uh, this project? Um, and, and maybe we can ask somebody from Mexico. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hi, I just want to ask, um, you were talking about how to multiply this effect. When you were talking uh, about how to multiply it, are you talking about that uh, maybe in the government or in these social organizations or maybe through banks, you act as a migrator and uh, faci facilitate these kind of uh, role models to people in maybe a new model of, uh, of uh, financial educations for people that are now excluded in, in, in the banking system? It's a great, it's a great question. Uh, and and um, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's a tough concept to grasp. The, 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 the notion of these, of these connectors is that they're archetypes, they're roles. Um, it's not that someone um, uh, becomes a business influencer as a career or is a business influencer you know, when they leave for work in the morning and then they come back home and that's their job. It's, it's a role that people play that they can put aside and assume another role or assume none of the other roles of being a, a, a business influencer. What we're saying is, is that these are individuals on the ground that uh, private enterprise, social enterprises, and governments can reach. And if they reach them at scale, meaning many of them within an economy, within a city like Mexico City, um, uh, uh, that, that the, the possibilities for advancing economic inclusion become that much greater. We're not saying that we've, um, uh, we, we, we're not saying that we've discovered any kind of panacea for, for economic exclusion. Rather, what we think is we have a very powerful tool, conceptual tool, that the three components that I mentioned, which are uh, governments, private enterprise, and social enterprise working together can use to locate these people on the ground so that, and then give them the tools that they need, mm -hmm. right? Give them the tools that they need at scale. So it's not just Ugo, because there are 100,000 Ugos in Mexico City, if not 500,000 Ugos in Mexico City. We located one, but what we think the technique does because we can tell you what the behaviors of a business influencer are, we give you the, 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 the ability to reach, right. if not the whole 500,000, 100,000, and you're that much farther and ahead of the game. And Peter, again, the government wouldn't be able to do it alone. So if you actually know that certain organizations are helping to promote that more of such connectors exist, then you can better target the public policies. And then uh, right. the effort from the government side 
together with social enterprises uh, is much more powerful. So let me get that right. So what, what you're saying is that previously, if, if, if governments, they said, well, we want to achieve more economic inclusion, um, that they might have thought, let's do it through a, increasing financial inclusion, and let's maybe just start a network of banks uh, with branches all over the country. Let's open, or, let's open accounts. Or, or give, yeah, open accounts, give people bank cards, and they said, okay, we, re we reached financial inclusion, great. And what you're saying is, well, not really. So w maybe we achieve financial inclusion, maybe not even, but certainly not economic inclusion. And if you want to reach economic inclusion and you want to talk about the how, uh, it's, it's about reaching these five uh, connectors, and that can be done, for example, through social... Rosario said it, said, said that, because she said, you need to know these people. No, so you don't, uh, you don't get to know them by being a far apart from them. Uh, social enterprises can really touch them, right. understand them, and then actually do something more uh, precise, more specific yeah. for them. Okay. Right, because you know, uh, just having access to a checking account, I don't think is financial inclusion. And we know that, that if it's not used, you know, which it's right. one of the issues that we face with financial inclusion is that it's about, and I think Ted said it, it's about access and usage, mm -hmm. you, you know. And I think with this type of research, you are getting to what are the, you, you know, what mm -hmm. motivates people to use it, um, you know. And so m maybe as a follow-up question, so where do we go from here? So now that we know that we have these five connectors, um, and, and, and we still have that same goal of increasing economic inclusion here in, here in Mexico. What, what is our next step? What, what do we recommend now? What do we, what do we ask and, and who do we ask to do that? You could probably better shape your public policies, no? Uh, we know that we need uh, the financial instruments, but that's not enough. So in the case of Mexico, and this could be just an example, of course, Bansef is doing a great job. That great job needs to be tied up and, and, and leveraged with the actions of organizations such as Promujer. So one idea would be to actually look in the government, which government agency would be uh, willing and able to help such organizations uh, and to let them know there's a blueprint. No, to let them know, you know what, we have identified this. And if you focus your actions on trying to reach these people, you will have more impact. Okay. Th th this research was, was new to Rosario. Uh, it will certainly be new to lots of other organizations, pro mujer like, then probably when they hear about this, they go like, okay, we can pinpoint this. We know these people. We we we've known them all along, but uh, all along, but uh, we uh, didn't know what else we can uh, do with them. How right. else we can foster what they're doing? How how else we can uh, imp uh, impose them? I understand. It, it, maybe there's a follow-up question from the room as well. Um, no? So m maybe just as a final question then, um, let me ask, so the, the, at the World Bank meetings, uh, the, the ambition was set to reach full uh, financial and economic inclusion by 2020. That's only five years from now. Um, what would be your top recommendation to get there? And do you think that we can actually achieve that? Who wants to? We need to get to work fast. <laughs> no, and, and and we've committed in Mastercard. We're committed to that because we actually in the, in the Austrian reunions, we 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 pledged a a, a a a goal of reaching 500 million new customers for that date. Uh, in order to get to that, uh, we need to apply every tool that we have in, in our back to to achieve that. This is a great tool. The connector study is a great tool. Uh, we cannot do it alone. We need, we need uh, the help, of course, of, uh, of governments. Governments would need our help, would need the help of organizations mm -hmm. such as uh, Promujer. So the idea is, let's sit all together and, and discuss how can we together uh, provoke uh, this in a faster, much faster way. No? Design okay. public policies around certain targets. And this could be one. The, as, as, as uh, Ted was saying, this is not panacea. This is not the solution, but this is a good, a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, with that, uh, maybe I want to uh, leave one last minute uh, to uh, Ted to uh, give his uh, conclusion or his summary, and then uh, um, we'll end it there. Ted? Okay. Thanks, Peter. Uh, you know, uh, this is a, a work in progress. Uh, it, it's very much uh, what Carlos was saying. 
um, uh, that that now's the time to try and 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 socialize uh, this work and work with governments and social enterprises to come up with the programs that are going it, to, it, what it acts is as we, we hope it can act as a force multiplier. Um, it's easy to imagine a government mandating a checking account or a debit card for everybody. Uh, and, and whether that's good policy or not, I'm not going to judge. But if you did have that policy and you were able to leverage knowledge like this of the behaviors who might ha actually get people to use such instruments, that obviously would be a, uh, a mm -hmm. phenomenal step forward for that, uh, for that government and for, for that economy. So, so with that end in, uh, end in view, um, if you go to the website, again, insights.mastercard.com slash the connectors project, you'll find that there are com boxes. There's, a, there's an interactive feature there that allows people to share with us either their experience with connectors, their desire to know more, and as the, we gather the information and as we curate the results, that come in through those comments boxes. We'll share it in a rolling way on the website, and we hope to be able to share it with people on the ground uh, in, in countries uh, around the world. We looked at four countries, but we do think that these archetypes are globally applicable. I'd also like to say just quickly, uh, before we uh, go, that we're going to be doing a, um, a Twitter chat, um, uh, and we're go be going to uh, uh, begin at 2.15 local time. 1.15 local time, 2.15 Eastern time. 1.15 local time, 2.15 um, uh, Eastern time. Um, it's hashtag connectors project, and the handle is MasterCard LAC. So if you'd like to hear more about it then, if you'd like to get maybe uh, more answers, be delighted to speak to you at that time. So Peter, thanks very much for the opportunity. It's been a great Absolutely. discussion. And let me also thank uh, Rosario. Uh, Carlos, and of course you, Ted, uh, for being here today. And thank you all for being present. Thank Thanks. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Very well.